Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome back to the third video of our Ultimate Premiere Pro Basics course. We just finished going over how to import video and make some very minor edits, and now we're on to some intermediate editing techniques. So, let's get started with the third video. Now that we have some more of the basics down, let's take a look at some more complex ways that we can stylize our video. We have our video laid out on the timeline with multiple clips in succession. And if we play, we can see that we simply transition from one clip immediately to the next. This is what's known as a hard cut, but we can actually transition from one clip to another in a variety of ways by adding a transition. Go up to this portion of your workspace and choose the tab that says Effects. Here we can see a variety of effects folders. In short, everything here can be categorized into two groups, Effects and Transitions. Effects will make changes to the characteristics of your clips, and transitions will manipulate the changing from one clip to another, rather than just having a hard cut. If we go to the bottom, we can see that there's a folder named Video Transitions. Click the arrow next to it to drop it down to reveal a variety of transition folders. Each of these contains a set of transitions that are considered within the same category. But for right now, we're going to experiment with the most commonly used transition. Go to Dissolve, and choose Cross Dissolve but transitions specifically need to be brought to the point at which two clips meet. When doing this, we can see that a little gray box appears on either side of the clips. And when we bring the playhead over top of this point, we can see that the clip fades from one to another. And if we bring it to halfway through, we can see that both clips are just faded out. This is what transitions do. They help stylize and ease each clip into the other. There's a variety of transitions that you can use by default in Premiere, so try them all out and see which ones that you think you may use for your projects. Now let's try working with an effect. Go to your effects panel and choose a Gaussian blur. But let's try getting there a faster way. If we know the name of an effect that we want ahead of time, we can type it into the search bar here, and even if we only know part of the name, we'll get a set of results. This can also help if you just want to see if Premiere has any effects that are within a certain category. So if you type in blur, for example, you'll find a variety of effects that have to do with blurring your footage. Like its name suggests, this effect will blur our footage. But when we drag and drop our effect, we don't see anything happen. This is because many effects will only take effect when you make specific changes to them. The characteristics of that effect can be manipulated from the Effect Controls panel located here. In order to see the effect parameters of your clip within the Effect Controls panel, you must have the clip highlighted by either clicking it or selecting it by clicking and dragging this box over top of your clip. If you can't find the Effects Controls panel, simply go to Window and choose Effect Controls. You can see from here that the blur effect is here. This is how you'll see effects displayed, with a name and then the parameters below it. And we can see that we have a value called blurriness, which right now is set to zero. This is why we don't see our effect implemented on our video. When we see a blue set of numbers like this, it means that we can manipulate this value. We can do this by either clicking and typing in a number or by clicking and dragging in either direction. Now we can see that our footage is starting to get more blurry as we increase this value. With most effects, you'll also have a variety of other options available to you. As we can see here, we can change the type of blur, as well as hide the fading round edges of our footage. Finally, by the name of our effect, we can see that there's this little title called FX. This is our effect toggle, and by clicking it, we can turn our effect on or off, without changing any of the parameters that we set. If you'd like to get rid of an effect altogether, simply click on it and hit the delete key, or right click and choose cut. But you can see that even with no effects in our effect controls panel, we have a variety of options available to us that look like they can be manipulated. By default, there should be three different sections to any video clip in your effect controls panel. Motion, Opacity, and Time Remapping. And then there should be a corresponding audio section as long as the clip that you have highlighted contains an audio track. The Motion section controls a variety of basic parameters to your clip. By moving either the X position or the Y position, you can move your clip either left or right or up and down. And the same is true for scale and rotation. Opacity controls how transparent your footage is, and time remapping controls the speed at which your clips play. But you may notice that there's these stopwatch symbols by each of these parameters. These are your toggle animation buttons. What they do is allow for your changes made to each parameter to be measured over time and changed throughout the duration of your clip. Let me show you. Let's take our playhead to the beginning of this clip and let's toggle our scale animation on so that our stopwatch is highlighted blue. We should now see a small diamond in this section of the panel. This diamond is called a keyframe. It tells Premiere that at this point, the scale of this clip should be at 100. But if we move forward and change the clip and bring it down to 50%, another keyframe will appear where our playhead is. Now we've told Premiere, start the scale at 100 and bring it down to 50 here, 
and this difference will be executed over the space in between. So let's take a look at what we've just done. We've just done what's called animating, and we've animated the scale of our footage. This is the exact same process we would use to keyframe our footage moving in any direction, rotation, or opacity. So we can manually fade out our clip by keyframing the opacity at 100 close to the end of our clip, and then going farther down to the very end, and then dropping it down to zero. And there we go, you've just done some simple animations and keyframing. This doesn't just apply to these characteristics though. Any effect will typically have a variety of parameters that you can keyframe and animate over time. And lastly, this little looping icon resets your parameters to the way they were by default. And clicking a blue stopwatch will disable animation and also delete any keyframes in that parameter. And guys, those have been a few key editing techniques that'll help you expand your use of Premiere Pro. That's it for this section, but in the next video, we're going to be going over adding titles and graphics to your video. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.